The fifth element is the Bruce Willis action masterpiece where he showed the world the way to destroy evil isn't just with guns and explosions, but love. Love? Yes, love. The love of guns and explosions. It starts off in Egypt during World War I, where Dylan McKay is working a summer job, relaxing in a cave, which back then was a skill set in high demand. Then these penguin robots show up out of nowhere, and after noticing their waddling look suspiciously like Steven Seagal's, he does what he must to protect the innocent women and children of Egypt. Oh. He bravely defeats them all, and those giant penguin pussies fly away in a four-armed ice cream cone. They wait 300 years just to be extra sure Dylan's not there anymore before those penguin fucks attack again. Unfortunately for them though, what we lack in teen heartthrobs, we make up for in Bruce Willis. You don't mind, do you? I think we'll be just fine. Anyways, they launch a universe-destroying evil fireball at the Earth, and since President Debo doesn't want to waste Willis's time with petty bullshit, trying to save the world, he hits up Peter Jackson, who agrees to send the message that penguins don't fly. They destroy everything except for this fucking hand that just won't die. After some mind-blowing science talk, human beings have 40 DNA memo groups. This has 200,000. They decide to use it to make a clone while they play laser tag. Can't wait. After the 100% scientifically accurate cloning process is complete, everyone agrees the result is absolute perfection. Told you. Perfect. I'd like to take a few pictures. While he could obviously obliterate the evil fireball that's still headed towards Earth, he has business to take care of in Thailand, which everyone agrees is far more important. Perfect. So they go with plan B instead, and now have no choice but to recruit Willis. Yes, you're trying to save the world. I remember. This lady proves herself too when she displays her incredible power by jumping through aluminum foil like a much, much sadder Kool-Aid man. Oh yeah! Now she's outside on a ledge being chased by police. There's nowhere else to go. And just when you think she's done for, she fucking YOLOs it right into Willis's taxi. Just had an accident. He's super cool about it though, and while I would be fucking pissed, he somehow doesn't even mind. <laughs> In fact, he is so cool about it that he tells the police to go fuck themselves and becomes a fugitive with the person he just met who destroyed his taxi, ruining his career. Even though she's the key to saving all life as we know it, all that sh** goes out the window when they ruin these poor innocent cops' happy meals. So now they must f***ing die. They miraculously get away, and Willis brings her where she wants to go, to Bilbo Baggins. God damn it, it's clear Bruce Willis is going to have to carry this entire movie. He tries to slap some sense into Bilbo, hey, which causes him to panic and run off. Then we see this guy sewing with a fucking stethoscope, which I really wish we could get to the bottom of, but we can't because Willis starts going all Cosby on her. You're right, I shouldn't have done that. Before talking his way out of it with a taxi-shaped business card. Mm -hmm. uh, uh. This movie is fucking wild. Anyways, we finally learn her name. <laughs> Nice to meet you, Lilumini Lekarariba Lemonai Chai Ekbate Sabat. At that moment, Bilbo runs back in wearing a wizard costume, and I gotta say, he fing nailed it. <sighs> now that things are about to get freaky, it's time for Willis to go. Wait, wait, wait. This is Gary Oldman, voila, who's part arms dealer, part fashion icon. I know. 
but his biggest accomplishment is taking the comb over look and making it work. But he does have some weaknesses. First, he loves blowing shit up. My favorite. Which is normally a strength and awesome, but the only people he actually blows up are people who are working for him. <laughs> Like these orcs that do exactly what he asked them to. You asked for a case. What the hell am I supposed to do with an empty case? And this jackass who calls him on a fucking payphone that really shouldn't exist. And himself for no real reason. Oh no. His second weakness is far more diabolical. Cherries, so delicious yet so dangerous. <laughs> Anyways, to stop the fireball, they need some rocks from an opera singer, obviously, and all life depending on this is no reason to turn it into a big deal. Be discreet as possible. No troops, no big operation. Because Debo's a terrible president. But don't worry, the general one-ups him and fails at failing when their plan leads to Willis becoming a minor celebrity. They've been blaring your name out on the radio for the last hour, you big ape. Even Bilbo realizes how ridiculous this entire thing is and shows up just to bash Willis in the head. <laughs> Credit to Willis, though. I am a meat popsicle. Who gives an Oscar-worthy performance of a man getting knocked out. We go from that to this bullshit. Where Leopard Print Cubert shows up for no other reason than to annoy everyone. <laughs> Thankfully, Willis is in no mood for this shit. I didn't come here to play Pumbaa. Green? Anyways, they're on a flying Hawaiian themed cruise ship along with these very dapper security guards when we get the most mind blowing cameo of Tom fucking Holland. Security, I am, uh, welcome to the. Who was only one when this sh came out, but he's such a good actor, you can't even tell. Unfortunately, we now have to suffer through more Qbert sh. Who's now a naval mine that brings Groot as his date to the opera, where we get more crazy cameos like Janet Reno, who was huge in the 90s, and the singer is none other than Cthulhu. Cardo. Or however the fuck you pronounce it, which would be the craziest cameo if it wasn't for that baby Tom Holland thing. Anyways, while that's happening, Lilu Minai, like Ariba Laminai Chai Ekbate Sabat, remembers the whole blowing her up thing from the beginning and goes all Jean Claude Van Mam <laughs> on those Mordor reject bitches. After easily slaughtering all of them, Gary Oldman shows up and acts like a total dick. I know what this stops. She gave you what you asked for. Why the fuck are you like this? But fuck him, because that second box was a lie too. We're not here. Not only should he have taken a second to check before planting his zip drive bomb, but now he owes these orcs a big apology. What the hell am I supposed to do with an empty case? You know, if he hadn't blown them all up. So these other orcs attack the ship and take everyone hostage. We're taking over the ship. That's when we find out where the rocks really are. Cthulhu fucking ate them. Told you this shit was wild. Somehow, Debo blames all of this on Willis. Is that your idea of a discreet operation? Even though a real president would have sent an entire fucking fleet. So how about you shut the hell up and let Willis handle it? But whatever, because Willis gives zero shits about any of that and is too busy kicking all sorts of ass. He even finds time for a quick round of American Gladiators before jumping back in to finish those fuckers off. They go check on Lilu Manai like our Arabalam and I try Ekbate Sabat when they find her napping in the air ducts like a lazy bitch. That's when they notice the zip drive bomb Gary Oldman left on the door 
for no other reason than to be a dick. Yeah. But he's also kind of an idiot and ends up blowing the f up while they fly away safely in his ship. But they're not done. Yes, now what? Because they find out they have to get to Dylan's cave in under two hours. So I've got some time or everything in the universe dies, which makes you wonder why Cthulhu was breakdancing <laughs> instead of hauling her ugly tentacled ass to Earth. On top of that, when they get in range of a wireless signal, Lilu Minai Lekarabha Laminai Chai Ekbate Sabat goes online and stumbles across some Steven Seagal movies on the dark web and now rightly questions why she should bother saving anything. I will snatch every motherfucker birthday. While the Illuminati like our Rabba Laminai Chai Ekbate Sabat is having an existential crisis, they're running around like idiots trying to figure out how to use rocks to stop an evil fireball. So they fumble around and end up activating the rocks by accident. <laughs> But Lilu Manai, like a rubber lemon, I try but they sabot, refuses to do her Captain Planet shit and just wants to watch the world burn. What's the use of saving life when you see what you do with it? So Willis digs deep to convince her that there's something much more powerful and beautiful than all the Seagal movies combined. What? And for a few brief moments, she finally understands true bliss. But both were in such a mesmerized trance that they forgot all about the evil fireball. And just when it appeared all life was doomed, a beam of pure awesomeness shot out of a bar in Thailand and the fireball got fucking wrecked. After seeing what we just saw, Lilo Manai, Lekaro Rabalam, and I try Ekbate Sabat understandably cannot contain herself, and the movie quickly ends before becoming far too graphic. <laughs>